Long before fertilizer bags, nutrient charts, and feeding schedules became the norm, farmers were producing reliable harvests year after year. Fields stayed productive for generations without synthetic nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium. Soil didn't collapse after a few seasons. Crops didn't depend on weekly inputs. The secret wasn't a product or a formula, it was a system. A system based on biology, patience, and, you know, understanding how land renews itself when it's worked with, not forced. Soil wasn't fed. Soil was built. Pre-fertilizer farmers didn't think in terms of feeding plants. They focused on building soil. Everything began with organic matter. Straw, leaves, crop residues, animal bedding, manure, weeds and kitchen scraps were returned to the land continuously. Not to add nutrients, but to create living soil that could regulate itself. Organic matter transformed into humus, which acted like a nutrient bank. It absorbed excess minerals, released them slowly, improved soil structure and protected crops from both deficiency and overload. Instead of chasing nutrients, farmers created conditions where nutrients stayed available naturally. Nutrients arrived as whole systems, not isolated elements. Before fertilizers isolated nutrients into soluble salts, all fertility came bundled. Manure contained carbon, microbes, calcium, magnesium, trace minerals and organic acids. Wood ash provided potassium and corrected acidity. Bone, shells, fish waste and charcoal added slow-release minerals that lasted years, not weeks. Nothing worked alone. Every input supported microbial life, which did the real balancing work underground. Crop rotation was the original soil test. Farmers didn't send soil samples to labs. They watched how crops responded. If yields dropped, the answer wasn't add more. It was change what grows here next. Heavy feeders were followed by light feeders. Shallow-rooted crops followed deep-rooted ones. Legumes were planted not because of nitrogen numbers, but because fields visibly recovered afterward. Different crops accessed different mineral layers, broke compaction, and redistributed nutrients through roots and residues. Over time, the soil corrected itself. Livestock closed the fertility loop. Animals weren't separate from farming. They were central to it. Grazing returned nutrients evenly to land. Bedding absorbed manure and urine, creating rich, composted material that went back to fields. Nothing left the system permanently. This closed loop meant fertility accumulated instead of leaking away. Soil became richer every year because nutrients cycled locally rather than being exported and replaced artificially. Fungi and bacteria did the real work. Long before microbes were named, farmers relied on them unknowingly. Minimal tillage, permanent fields and constant organic cover allowed fungal networks to thrive. These fungi transported phosphorus, calcium and trace minerals directly into plant roots in exchange for sugars. Instead of force-feeding nutrients, plants negotiated for them. This kept growth balanced, resilient and disease-resistant. Tillage was limited and purposeful. Soil wasn't constantly disturbed. Excessive tillage was avoided because farmers noticed it dried soil, reduced yields and invited weeds. When soil was turned, it was done carefully and infrequently. Structure was protected because structure meant life. Healthy soil crumbed, drained well, and held moisture during drought without irrigation or chemicals. You know, weeds were teachers, not enemies. Certain weeds would appear in certain conditions, and, well, deep taproot weeds actually broke compaction. Nitrogen-loving weeds would show up after manure-heavy years. And those mineral accumulating plants, they pulled nutrients from deep layers and returned them when cut and dropped. Farmers would observe weed patterns to understand soil condition and then, 
Instead of just eradicating the symptoms, they'd adjust their practices accordingly. Fertility was added in the off-season. Rather than feeding crops directly, fertility was added when soil biology could process it, often in autumn or winter. This meant inputs had months to break down before roots needed them, which, in turn, prevented burn, runoff and dependency. Growth wasn't forced, it was prepared for. Balance mattered more than speed. Pre-fertilizer farming wasn't about instant results. It was about stability. Soil improved slowly, but, you know, permanently. Organic matter increased. Water retention improved. Crops became more resilient to weather extremes. Fields didn't crash after a few years because nothing was being stripped faster than it could regenerate. So, why did this system disappear? Well, synthetic fertilizers worked fast. They boosted yields quickly and, honestly, required less land knowledge. Over time, convenience just replaced understanding. But, you know, that speed came with a cost declining organic matter, compacted soil, increased pests, nutrient runoff, and a growing dependency on constant inputs. What was lost wasn't efficiency, it was resilience. The forgotten secret rediscovered. The secret farmers used before fertilizer wasn't mysterious. They trusted biological systems. They fed soil life, not crops. They recycled everything. They observed, adapted, and allowed time to do the heavy lifting. Modern gardeners struggling with tired soil, poor structure, and constant feeding schedules are often missing the same thing, patience and biology. When soil is built instead of fed, fertility becomes self-sustaining. And once you experience soil that improves every year without constant inputs, it becomes clear. Fertilizer was never the secret. Soil life was.